Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game that happened uh, right about after the game everyone was waiting for didn't happen. You of course know the one I'm talking about. It is now Magnus Carlsen versus Levon Arunyan and it is quite a brilliant positional masterpiece. Now everyone uh, was unsure whether Magnus would uh, just uh, bail out of the uh, entire event or was it just the game against Hans that he didn't want to play. Uh, but now his next game was against Levon and he actually showed up unlike in the previous tournament where Mamedyar was just left hanging in there uh, but it's a very nice game so let's check it out and also if you guys have any uh, well interesting comments about what is happening do share of course that is why we are here so Magnus has the white pieces and he opens with the Reti knight to f3 we have d5 by Levon g3 we have c5 and now bishop to g2 Magnus opting for the uh, king's Indian attack uh, we have knight to c6 and now pawn to d4 we have e6 by Levon castles and now uh, knight to f6 we have pawn to c4 and now d captures on c4 basically transposing into a closed catalan and there is uh, quite a lot of theory on this of course queen to a4 by magnus we have bishop to d7 and now queen captures on c4 b5 by levon of course the pawn cannot be captured as then of course uh, well uh, let's say queen captures knight captures you are in uh, very big trouble so instead after b5 queen back to d3 by magnus and now pawn to c4 we have queen back to d1 and rook to c8 so nothing new here all has been played before and what's more interesting uh, it has all been played before by Levon himself we have bishop to f4 by magnus and now h6 and there is a game uh, from this year's fide grand prix that was played in berlin between grigory oparin and Levon arunyan oparin uh, in this position played pawn to a3 and he defeated Levon. but magnus does not repeat pawn to a3 he actually plays knight sorry <laughs> uh, he actually plays knights to c3 which is not amongst the d engines top three recommendations so uh, he is definitely up to something here and of course it is as of move 12 that we have a completely new game so of course the b5 pawn is uh, attacked pawn to b4 uh, knight to b5 and now queen to a5 putting pressure on this knight here so knight to d6 check and levon has to now give up the bishop if he doesn't want to uh, lose the rook so bishop captures bishop captures and now knight to e4 uh, putting pressure on the bishop here so bishop back to f4 and now pawn to c3 uh levon is already creating a pass pawn on move 16. so queen b1 by magnus and now pawn to f5 cementing the knight on e4 as the queen was attacking it and also there might have been some nasty discoveries then the bishop attacks the knight as well so this is uh, the the way to play it uh pawn to a3 by magnus and now we have castles a very interesting line here would be g5 but this is rapid so of course um, it's hard to um, uh, find everything but I will show if, if something is interesting for example bishop e, uh, uh, attacking the bishop bishop to e3 and now b3 sacrificing the pawn here and if b captures on c3 attacking the b pawn now you can just defend it let's say queen a4 then rook b8 and the b3 pawn will be will be uh, very uh, hard to deal with so okay after a3 Levon just castles instead and now Magnus plays a captures on b4 we have queen to b5 and now rook to e1 the defending the e2 pawn here pawn to a5 now challenging the the b4 pawn and now b captures on a5 and now Levon goes for g5 and now his idea is all right after Magnus moves the bishop I'm gonna uh, deal with the uh with the b2 pawn I'm gonna deal with the a5 pawn and so on uh but that's just it Magnus doesn't move the bishop he plays b captures on c3 and this is where the game really starts so uh, how how can Levon play this of course he has to capture the bishop but he might as well take it into the end game he's gonna win a piece so let's see what the Magnus has in mind queen captures on b1 we have rook e captures on b1 and the g captures on f4 and now we have rook to b7 Magnus attacks the bishop also gets the rook to the seventh rank uh, which basically means he uh, evolves it into a pig bishop to e8 and now g captures on f4 we have knight captures on c3 again putting pressure on the e2 pawn and now just pawn to e3 and here knight back to d5 here rook to f7 dealing with the rook here 
uh, would be would be the maybe the the more resilient way of just knight d8 kicking away the rook from b7. But Levon first plays knight to d5, and this allows Magnus to quickly advance the pawn. Pawn to a6, uh, rook to f7, and now knight to e5. A very very nasty idea where uh, it's very hard for Levon to actually make a move because now uh, the rook is hanging, and if you capture on b7 now, then a captures on b7, rook to b8, and the rook a8, you have big problems here. You cannot capture because the bishop on e8 hangs and now Levon has to trade he plays knight captures on e5 we have bishop captures on d5 further trading down e captures on d5 and now f captures on e5 and again you have the exact same problem if rook captures on b7 pawn captures rook b8 and of course rook a8 will win the game for white rook captures on b7 rook captures here with check and the magnus would end up being up two pawns of course that is completely winning so here we have rook to a8 Levon, uh, uh, of course avoids this and now rook captures on f7 by magnus king captures and now pawn to a7 and look at this position now uh magnus is is up two pawns which is you know a reasonable compensation for the piece but usually not enough however he has a pass pawn on a7 or rather uh, three pawns for the piece which is of course i forgot about the a7 pawn he has uh, five pawn, uh, two pawns up plus the past a7 pawn and that is uh, you know compensation in itself and uh, uh, what's even uh, more important is that a7 is a dark square and levon has a light square bishop of course he will not be able to challenge this pawn uh anytime soon the only way to challenge the pawn is to bring the king over to b7 and then capture the pawn with the rook but then you have other problems as magnus will start pushing these pawns he will get the king up the board he will have another pass pawn so it's definitely a race whether it can be saved uh, it is up to Levon to show, uh, but uh, very hardly uh, so. So bishop uh, to b5, not allowing the king to st just start marching up the board. King to g2, and now pawn to f4. We have e captures on f4, king to g6, now trying to get the king to f5 to completely blockade uh, Magnus's um, plans with the king. King f3 and king to f5. And now can Magnus uh, break through here? Yes, he can. Rook to b1, attacking the bishop, and once the bishop moves, of course, you will play bishop to b, a uh, rook to b7. And uh, it, it's a question of, uh, where to move the bishop. For example, if you play something like bishop here, uh, to, to, to guard the, the b6 square, the b7 square, you just play rook b6. And again, there's no good way to actually keep an eye on the b7 square. So you will have to move the bishop and then you, you have problems. Uh, if you, for example, play bishop to a4, even rook f6 checkmate is possible. So you don't want to do that. So after rook b1, we have bishop to a4 and now rook to b7 by Magnus. We have bishop to d1 check and king to e3. We have bishop to c2 trying to prevent the, the king from going into the position, but now just pawn to f3. Uh, we have king back to e6, now king d2. We have bishop to f5 and king to c3. This is how Magnus gains access to the queen side. Bishop to h3 and now king to b4. We have king to f5 and now rook to f7 check, not allowing any pawns to be captured. King g6 and now rook to f6 with check. King h5, rook to a6 and now of course his plan is king all the way to b7, win the rook and then win the game. So bishop to c8, Levon will try to stop this, attacking the rook, rook to a2, and now king to g6. We have king to c5, and now king to f5. We have king to b6, uh, now uh, get, getting ready to uh, bring the, the king uh, into the position, or maybe just uh, go, go after it with the rook. Uh, all depends on what uh, Levon plays. King captures on f4, and now rook to c2. Uh, the idea now is that if king captures on f3, of course, rook captures on c8 wins the game. After rook captures, king b7 with a8 next, and then this uh, the passed e pawn will win the game. So after bishop c2, we have bishop to f5 by the one attacking the rook. Now rook to c6. We have king to e3, and now king to b7, and there now, of course, is no way of uh, uh, doing this. We have rook to e8, uh, and the Magnus just promotes the pawn to a queen. We have rook captures, king captures, and he was in this position on move 53 that Levon Aronian resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So uh, very, very nicely done by Magnus. Losing three full points for that uh, early resignation against Hans Moke Niemann, uh, but then coming back into the tournament with this very nice win uh, against Levon Aronian. If, if there are any 
new players who are not grandmasters watching this video, I will show how to actually win this. For example, if king captures on d4, uh, your past e pawn is winning. That's the whole point. Uh, that doesn't matter what you do after h5, e7, black will at some point have to give up the bishop for the rook. Rook d6 chases the bishop, bishop e8, you chase the bishop, bishop c6 check, for example, and now whatever you play, let's say king e3, just e8 queen, you win this uh, bishop, and now, of course, your position is completely winning. Let's say king captures on f3, rook e5 goes after this pawn, after this pawn. If d4, you just capture this one. If d3, you just give up the rook for this pawn, for example, king e2. You start marching the pawn, d2, h5, d1, queen. You will capture it, capture it, and now, of course, this pawn promotes to a queen, and then you win. Uh, that's the uh, that's the point. So yeah, very nicely done by Magnus. It would be it would be very silly if Magnus uh, dropped that game against Neiman and then he didn't uh, he doesn't qualify for the actual event because these are the preliminaries. Only the uh, out of the 16 players that are here, only the top eight go into the knockout. So uh, of course Magnus is uh, hoping to be in those eight uh, eight that go into the knockouts. But it, it will be interesting. I mean, if he gets in, in the quarterfinals, for example, if he gets paired against Neiman, if Neiman also advances because those three three points Neiman got against Magnus uh, really go a long way, uh, you know, when it comes to being in the, in the top eight. Uh, will Magnus also, uh, uh, you know, just not play uh, and uh, drop out of the tournament, basically get eliminated by Neiman? It's something that we will have to see because if they both advanced, uh, advance and I'm pretty sure they will. Okay, I can just check the standings quickly if you guys are interested so far. Okay, so far the the young Indians are leading. Ergaisi and Pragananda are, are in the lead, followed by Magnus and Neiman. So those are the top four. So chances are we will be seeing uh, both Hans and Magnus in the in the actual event after the preliminary. So, uh, you know, the future of chess is always interesting. Uh, what will tomorrow bring? No one can ever uh, uh, know. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a topic for another game, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Really a nice uh, nice idea by Magnus, just giving up the, the piece for the, that pass pawn. And uh, really, once you, uh, well, you know, it might seem like a, a, you know, a, long, a long thing to calculate, but once you see this pawn actually hit a7, which is a dark square, then it all makes sense. And Magnus, of course, saw this like 20 moves uh, ago. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I'm always interested in, in your opinion on this uh, matter as the whole world is, uh, you know, just shaken by, by what is happening. So do share in the comments. Uh, I would like to thank Dustin Lackey, uh, Vasudevan Van Srinivasan, uh, Marcelo De Baros, Paul Sertanovic and Ante Butigan is Dalmatia for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of this wonderful event, uh, most likely until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.